As I walked out the entrance, my husband grabbed my shoulder, and we quickly became entangled in a scuffle. I absolutely did not want to be hit, but if possible, I wanted to land a punch myself. However, the strength of a man is incredible, and my husband was seriously trying to overpower me. I was also desperate to resist, but at that moment, we heard a loud scream from across the street. My husband and I froze in place. The woman who screamed was looking at us. With a terrifying expression, or rather, she was looking down. A, a pervert. My name is Sabrina, and I am 36 years old. I've changed jobs several times in the past, and I'm currently working for a foreign company. I have no complaints about my job, and I'm very grateful to have been hired. However. Balancing work and my personal life is quite difficult. I now realize that it depends on the person I'm with. If my husband weren't Tim, my life would have been very different. To be honest, I've never had any trouble with growing up. I was headhunting to work for the company I'm currently working for, and I'm very satisfied with both my salary and benefits. My biggest flaw is that I have no eye for men. Well, there are countless flaws that I have, such as being bad at housework or not being good with children. But the one that stands out the most is my bad luck with men. Despite having learned painful lessons numerous times in the past, I was once again deceived this time. Before meeting my husband Tim, I had been plagued by various troubles. While living together with an ex-boyfriend, he used my car without permission during my overseas business trip, and even went on a cheating trip with another woman. However, that is not the main issue. What was more problematic than anything else was the fact. That my ex-boyfriend had had his driver's license revoked in the past, after causing a severe injury to an elderly person on a pedestrian crossing. Although we were living together, my ex and I were complete strangers, and there was no contact from the police. As a result, he kept the fact that he caused a major accident from me. However, I eventually found out from the police. Because he had a self-inflicted car accident on the way back from cheating trip, using my car, according to the police, he had been trying to move the car somewhat, but had crashed into the telephone pole while under the influence of alcohol. Passersby reported the incident, and when the police arrived, it was immediately evident that he was driving under the influence of alcohol without even needing a test. When the officer asked for his license, he couldn't show it. The police checked the data and discovered that he was driving without a license. Of course, he was arrested on the spot. I received a call from the police and immediately returned home from my business trip. I also received intense questioning. If it was found that I had left the car to him. Knowing that he was driving without a license, it would have been a huge problem. Fortunately, my ex-boyfriend told the truth, so I was not held accountable. But I still received a warning from the police. His parents deposited the money for the damage to the car and the inconvenience fee. But to be honest, that didn't matter to me. This incident became a significant trauma for me. And I decided not to have a boyfriend until I met my husband at my previous job. My feelings of love began to stir again. About five years after the incident, my first impression of my husband was good. I thought he was a soft-spoken person with a well-groomed appearance. His way of speaking and behavior were all very smart. I was surprised. That he brought his lunch every day, but I had an even better impression of him 
because he was also capable of handling household chores. The reason I became closer to my husband was that we started working on the same project. Please date me with marriage in mind. My husband told me that after he asked me out for dinner a few times. My heart danced, but at the same time, I honestly revealed my inner feelings to my husband. The trauma from that time. Then my husband took out his driver's license from his wallet and said, "I have a valid driver's license. See, I don't cheat. I'm not usually the type to say that sort of thing, but if it makes you feel comfortable, I'll say it as much as you want." His straightforward words struck my heart. Maybe I could have a peaceful life with this person. However, I still have a problem. Thank you, but if we date and the conversation leads to marriage, do you want me to be a housewife? What do you mean? I want to continue working even after getting married. Also, I'm not good at housework, so currently, I hire a cleaning service three times a week. If you want someone to take care of your home. I don't think I'm the right person. My husband listened to my story and chuckled. Everyone has something they're not good at, right? I think we can make up for each other's weaknesses if we work together. Thinking it was a very smart answer, I accepted my husband's words without a doubt, and we got married after six months of dating. However, it seems that I still didn't have a knack for choosing men. My husband changed completely after we got married. You came home late again, huh? Every Monday, my husband says this to me. You're saying that again? How many times do I have to explain it to you? I respond to my husband with a sigh. I work for a company based in Southeast Asia, so my days off are different from my husband's, who works for a regular company. We used to work at the same workplace, so our days off were almost the same. But now, because of the time difference, my days off are scattered. How's work going? It's okay, I guess. Actually, my work is going quite well, but my life is not going as smoothly. My husband and I both changed jobs shortly after getting married, but he's been having a hard time lately. I started doing housework that I'm not good at, trying to support him. I thought it would help him focus on work, but now he's even nitpicking my cooking. Meatloaf again? It's the only dish I'm proud of making well. Well, you were good at your job, but <laughs> shame. His words made me angry, but I held back and waited for his work to pick up. However, he quit his company without telling me after only two months. Now he's working part time at a cafe, earning around one thousand dollars a month for working only a few hours a day, three days a week. Until now, we've split the household expenses in half, but with this current income, splitting them equally is no longer possible. We can manage for a while with our savings, considering our past incomes. There are already dark clouds looming over our relationship. It happened one day when I returned home from a two-night business trip, and my husband was in a very bad mood. If this kind of thing continues, I'm getting a divorce. Huh? Suddenly, my husband's declaration of divorce. Left me bewildered and speechless. You went on a business trip, and didn't even make my meal before you left. What are you talking about? Because making the husband's meal is the wife's job, isn't it? It seems like I've brought another hopeless person into my territory. Um, I don't understand at all. Well then. Let's get a divorce. Half amused, I looked at my husband's face and calmly thought, 
if you are the one proposing a divorce, then that's even convenient. All right, let's get a divorce. What? Are you sure about that? Yeah, it's fine. Your words and actions are completely different from before we got married. Uh, are you really okay with a divorce? Yeah, I'm good. I'll start packing my things. Wait a minute. Hey, what is it now? You're being persistent. That's how you're going to leave me, don't you? Is this guy crazy or something? It was him who wanted the divorce. I was confused, but I still gathered the bare minimum of my belongings and tried to leave the house. Then my husband chased me with incredible force. You have a man, don't you? That's what it is, isn't it? Wait, what? <laughs> no, there is no man. Okay. Then where are you going? You must have another man you can switch to at any time. I told you there isn't anyone. Don't you dare lie to me. Even if I said there is or isn't, you'll just keep doubting me, won't you? I'm tired of dealing with you. I can't believe I ended up marrying such a petty man. Am I really a magnet for terrible men? Or is there some pheromone I'm emitting that attracts them? While lost in thought, my husband continued to press me. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Don't get carried away. Huh? I'm not getting carried away or anything. Then why is that only you were able to switch jobs smoothly? Well, I guess it was just luck. I worked hard at my job too. I was headhunted by that company, you know. This was a lie. My husband was not headhunted by his previous company. He had been saying that even before he joined the company. But I know the truth, because I was the one who was headhunted. I kept quiet about this fact to avoid hurting my husband's pride. But even now, my husband is still trying to show off to me. Without realizing my consideration, now it doesn't matter how much I think about my husband's worthlessness. What matters is that I need to deal with this annoying situation in front of me. When I let out a big sigh toward my husband, he threw a straight punch at me. But the next moment, he groaned and squatted on the floor. As he had hit his finger joint hard with the metal fittings on my back that I used to block his punch. Oh dear, that must have hurt. Besides, you were trying to use violence just now, weren't you? This could be a sufficient reason for a divorce, don't you think? Sh shut up. Who do you think you are, telling me what to do? Women. We're born to support men, you know. <laughs> That's such an outdated way of thinking. Haven't you forgotten that you were born from a woman too? Shut up! You are so damn cheeky. Then why did you even marry me in the first place? You knew I wasn't cut out for domestic life, didn't you? In fact, I told you that clearly, didn't I? It's a man's privilege to re-educate such women. Huh? <sighs> you really don't get it, do you? I really don't have a knack for choosing men. Well then, let's discuss divorce through our lawyers at a later date. Wait a minute! Don't mess around. I ignored my husband and took my luggage outside to the front door. He followed me and grabbed my shoulder. We quickly got into a scuffle. I didn't want to be punched, but I wanted to land a hit myself. However, his strength was overwhelming. My husband was determined to pin me down, and I was desperately struggling. Then I heard a woman's loud scream. My husband and I both froze. The woman who screamed was staring at us with a terrifying expression. Or rather, she was looking down. A, a, per 
effort. I also noticed that my husband's sweatpants had slid down to his knees. He blushed and immediately let go of me, pulling up his pants. You, you weren't wearing underwear again? Come on. You probably thought it was okay since you were at home, but I hate that kind of depravity in you. My husband, who was seen with his lower half exposed by a neighbor, hurriedly ran back inside the house. As expected, he fiercely resisted my desire for divorce afterward. But I had already completed the divorce application myself. Anticipating such a situation, I had received the photo data of my husband's embarrassing appearance from the neighbor who witnessed it. Even after the divorce, my ex-husband persistently followed me around, but I used the photo data as leverage to make him agree to the divorce. Still, he ambushed me in front of my company or house and tried to talk to me. He said things like, "It's difficult for a woman to live alone," or "The being single is worrying." Completely unnecessary concerns. In the end. This guy was still looking down on women even after the divorce. I absolutely didn't want to spend my life with such a person. It was impossible. Even if I were to feel lonely when I get old, there are plenty of other ways to live. Hey, where are you now? This was the last call from my ex-husband. I don't think I have an obligation to tell you, do I? Are you on a business trip? Well, then I can't see you today, even if I wait at your company's building, huh? Honey, I was thinking about what I can do to start over with you. It was all my fault. Your meatloaf was delicious. You always wanted to be praised, didn't you? I'm sorry I didn't notice. From now on, I'll praise and encourage you. So. Come back to me. This guy is seriously crazy. I felt my spine freezing and hung up the phone without saying a word. In fact, I would never meet him again. As I flown to Southeast Asia for work at the head office, I intend to settle here permanently. My parents died early, and I am an only child, so I don't have any attachment to a particular place. Well, I think I probably won't get married again. For the time being, I'll focus on my work and hobbies. I hope there is a wonderful future waiting ahead of me.